Hey, yeah, man. Take it easy. Good shoot today. If that isn't my biggest reoccurring nightmare, I don't know what is. Today we're going to be talking about dolly zooms, or what's also known as the vertigo effect. And that last shot was an example of one. I'm going to show you a few more examples of how they've been used in popular media you may have seen, how they're achieved, and how you can pull one off all on your own. Well, let's get into it. So what is a dolly zoom? Fortunately for us, the name comes from exactly what's happening in camera. The dolly means that you're pushing in or pulling out from the subject physically with the camera, and the zoom means that you're zooming in or out with the lens itself while the dolly is taking place. If you're pushing in with the dolly, you would zoom out with your lens at the same time, giving yourself a wider field of view while pushing into your subject. In contrast, if you're pulling out with your camera, you would zoom in with your lens, giving you a smaller field of view while pulling further back away from your subject. Another term for this effect is called the vertigo effect, coined for the film Vertigo by Alfred Hitchcock. You may have seen this in other films and TV shows, Lord of the Rings, Jaws, and this has even been done in a few animated films like Ratatouille and The Lion King. This effect can be used in a few different ways in storytelling. For one, it can be a realization that the character is coming to finally. As seen in Vertigo, it can kind of give you a disorienting feeling, or it can also show you that something eerie or supernatural is happening. So as we try to do this effect ourselves in real time, it's important to keep in mind that there's a lot of moving parts and nuances to achieving this effect right in camera. To start with the first word, dolly, you need a way to move the camera physically to or away from the subject that you're trying to film. This can either be done with a giant dolly, a slider, or if you're confident in your gimbal work, this can also be done with that. For today, I set up a simple slider and put my camera on top of that. Here's an example of what it looks like just moving back and forth with the slider without any zoom effect. The next part we have to tackle is the zoom. And for this, you're gonna need a zoom lens. If you're shooting this on your phone or you only have primes, this isn't gonna work for you. Another aspect you have to keep in mind is the focus. As we get closer or further away from the subject, your focus distance is gonna change and you have to account for that. Luckily, a lot of modern cameras have built in autofocus that will be able to track the focus while you do the dolly zoom move. But unfortunately, this isn't found in every camera and can be hit or miss depending on what you're using. Finally, you have to combine all those things into one to achieve the dolly zoom. You have to push into your subject, zoom out on the lens in a nice smooth motion, keep your subject in focus and in the proper frame. So here's a trick how you can pull off a dolly zoom while eliminating one step, the zoom. Another thing you'll need is a camera that either records in 4K or higher. So here in Adobe Premiere, I found my clip that I've done the normal dolly on and I've dropped it into the timeline. As you can see, we're pushing in on the skeleton, but there's no zoom happening. You also want to double check your sequence settings to make sure you're shooting in 1920 by 1080. Head to the beginning of the clip and enable keyframes so we can adjust the scale and the position at the same time. Now I'll adjust the scale and the position at the beginning of the clip to match the framing that I want. On the scale function, we'll start a little more zoomed in and at the end, we'll zoom out. Now I'll go to the end of the clip and adjust the framing to match the beginning of the clip. Here in the scale function, we'll zoom out a little and reframe to ensure everything's in position. As you see here, we have a functioning dolly zoom. And here's the finished product. Lastly, this trick of pulling off a dolly zoom is for those who are recording themselves like me and operating the camera all on their own. What I did for the intro dolly zoom is I shot each part separately and composed them together in a green screen. This may include a little more setup, but this allows you to achieve the same effect all in post. Essentially, we're using a green screen and filling the dolly and the zoom in two different parts. To start off, I filmed a wide plate of my computer desk. This will serve as our background. 
Next, I set up a green screen and filmed myself in front of it. Now, in post, we'll combine these two together and remove the green screen, adding the desk behind me. Now, by adding keyframes, we'll adjust the size and width of the background, independent of me in front of the green screen. And all together, I think the shot looks pretty good. And I was able to do this all on my own without any extra hands. I hope this gave you a few options and ways that you can achieve a dolly zoom effect and how you can incorporate this in your own work. Well, thanks for watching. I hope you learned something today. If you have any questions, feel free to leave them in the comments. Feel free to follow me on Instagram. And until next time, see you later.